Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, The Closet. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a shaman performing a ritual as drum beats grow louder and louder. She is holding a knife while dancing and bells hang from the blade. On her other hand is another knife but without the bells. She suddenly stops with her hands raised in the air. The drum beats stop too, and the room is silent. The woman steps out of the room and approaches the closet while she clinks the bells. As if being controlled by an unseen force, she slits her own throat and blood sprays everywhere. On the other side, Sang and his daughter are both moving to a new home. Sang is on the phone, talking to someone about arranging a nanny for his 11-year-old daughter. Meanwhile, the daughter is in the backseat, looking sullenly out the car window. Her father knows that she isn't happy about the move, and he tries to get her excited about their new house. Still, the daughter doesn't say anything. A few seconds later, Sang is forced to slam on the brakes, because he spotted a dead deer in the middle of the road. He clambers out of the car and sees that the carcass is already being feasted upon by crows. The daughter steps out of the car too and runs into the forest lining the side of the road. Her father is concerned that she will get lost, so he runs after her. He finds her standing in a clearing, overlooking a beautiful woodland house that looks like it's from a fairy tale. Sang tells her that that is their new house. While unpacking his things inside the new house, a crow slams into the attic window. This sets off a panic attack for Sang, making him remember the car accident that caused the death of his wife. He was behind the wheel, with his wife and daughter in the backseat. It was too late when he noticed that a truck was going to crash into their car. Sang feels the walls of the room closing in around him, and he struggles to breathe. With the strength he has left, Sang grabs his bottle of prescription pills to halt the panic attack symptoms. After he gets his bearings, he calls his psychiatrist. The psychiatrist advises him that if his panic attacks continue, he might get life-threatening seizures again. There is also the matter of his daughter's own psychological trauma following the death of her mother. Because of that, the daughter became more withdrawn and depressed, and Sang moved them to a quieter part of the country so they could have a fresh start. The psychiatrist also suggests that if the move doesn't work, Sang can send his daughter to an art camp for kids. That night at dinner, Sang steps away from the table to take a call. One of his architectural firm clients is threatening to cancel their contract because he never visits the site. Sang reasons that he can't do on-site visits yet because he's taking care of his daughter. The daughter watches a video of her mother singing happy birthday to her, desperately clinging to the joyful memory she has. Then, she hears a sound coming from her closet. She opens the door and sees nothing but her dresses hanging on the rack. Unbeknownst to her, a demonic child is standing behind her. The daughter turns around and screams in fear. Sang hears his daughter's scream from his office downstairs. He rushes to her bedroom door and frantically knocks. The daughter opens the door and he asks her if she screamed. However, she smiles, saying that she didn't scream. Sang checks her room and sees that everything appears to be in order, except for the dirty rag doll she is holding. She tells him that she just found it in her room. Sang offers to throw away the ugly doll, but she is already enamored by it, so he lets her keep it. The next morning, the daughter's spirits seem to be better. She is eating more, and she even smiles at her father again. After finishing her food, she asks him if she can play in her room. Sang is surprised by this sudden shift in her behavior, but he allows her to go upstairs. Before leaving, she hugs her father and tells him she likes the house and that she's happy with her new friend. When he goes home that evening, Sang calmly explains to his daughter that he has to go away for two months required by the project. He will be going home every weekend, and he has hired a nanny who will take care of her. The daughter does not like this and lashes out at Sang, saying that even if she does not approve, he will still leave her. That night, as he works on the building plans, Sang hears a series of loud footsteps coming from the daughter's bedroom upstairs. Then he also hears violin strains. He scolds her, telling her to go to sleep. But the violin strains just get louder and turn to ear-splitting screeches. Sang heads upstairs to reprimand her, but sees that she's sleeping soundly in her bed. He walks to the closest to investigate, and an apparition appears. It's the ghost of the same shaman shown earlier in the film. She rushes to Sang and then slits her throat with a knife like she did earlier. He gasped as blood pours on him. The next morning, Sang suddenly wakes up back at his desk. Everything he saw was a dream, and he almost wets himself with a nightmare. But when he turns to look at the building plans he worked on the previous night, only to find they were all torn to shreds. He heads to his daughter's room and discovers that her beloved violin is now angrily scratched up and the strings are broken. Sang looks out the window and sees his daughter in the garden. She had just slaughtered a crow with a blade, and a strange look is on her face with one eye slowly turning white. Sang is now even more concerned about the state of his daughter's mind. He asks his psychiatrist how things will go in the art camp if he enrolls his daughter there. 
he is also being pressured by his client to go to the site. One time, he encounters his daughter in the hallway, holding her dirty doll. She is still acting weirdly, and lashes out at her father again. She mocks him for buying her things, instead of actually getting to know her. The argument ends, with her screaming in a monster-like voice. A nanny arrives, but she couldn't care less about the daughter's well-being. Instead, she chats on the phone with her friend, and talks about how rich Sang is, while wearing his dead wife's expensive rings. The nanny hears the daughter screaming, and throwing her things inside her room. But she doesn't do anything to help the kid. The daughter doesn't eat the meals the nanny prepares either. She even discovers that the daughter had hidden a goldfish inside her milk glass as a prank. The nanny gets scared, and quits on her first day. Sang arrives at the building site, and meets with his customers. He gets a text from the psychiatrist, saying that the art camp is ready for his daughter. That night, the daughter hears voices from the closet, inviting her to go with them. She gets a glazed look on her face, and then several hands reach out and yank her inside the closet. The daughter disappeared after that. Her father goes sick with worry, and after a month, he's still searching for her. A news segment featuring the case goes viral, which paints Sang as the probable culprit. It describes him as a mentally disturbed workaholic, and mentions that his daughter's disappearance is very similar to a young boy's case three years ago. Right then, a man in a diner watches the segment and gets very interested in Sang's predicament. Sang goes through his daughter's music sheets, only to find a sketch of a stick woman near the closet. He remembers the horrifying dream he had, and begins to think that what happened may not be just an ordinary kidnapping. The internet in the house goes out, and Sang calls a technician to repair it. But the technician who appears is the same man from the diner previously. He pretends that he will inspect the house to fix it, and Sang lets him in. The truth is that he is an exorcist, and he believes that his daughter is a part of a decades-long string of child disappearances. He shows Sang an album, filled with pictures of the 32 other missing children. Like his daughter, they all started behaving strangely and sketching the same girl before they disappeared. The exorcist shows a video of a ritual next. It's the same ritual depicted earlier in the film. And the exorcist explains that the family of the first missing child had hired a shaman to perform a ritual, and found out the child was still alive. While performing the ritual, the shaman sensed that the closet is the lair of a demonic child, and she tried to banish it and rescue the innocent child. But the demonic child was too powerful, and instead caused the shaman to slit her own throat. The exorcist then reveals that the shaman was his mother, and that her death urged him to continue investigating the disappearances. Sang does not believe the exorcist's story at all. But the exorcist reasons that he is the only one on Sang's side, and everyone else thinks he killed his daughter. So Sang reluctantly agrees. The exorcist explains that souls only stay in the underworld for up to 49 days. They need to rescue the daughter's soul before then. Sang lets the exorcist set up his various ghost detecting equipment. This includes a device, which is used to detect unusual wavelengths that denote paranormal activity. His theory is that the demonic child snatches children's souls, and takes them to the underworld, using the closet as a portal. If the missing children stay there longer than 49 days, they will become monsters, called the blinded. So Sang needs to act quickly to bring his daughter back before it's too late. Next, the exorcist pastes some paper talismans on the daughter's bedroom door. Then he sets up cameras around the room. He and Sang monitor everything from his office. Later that night, the lights start to flicker inside the room, and weird static noises are detected by the equipment. Sang also hears his daughter's violin being played too. They leave a huge teddy bear soaked in blood, as a trap for the demon inside the closet. There is no more paranormal activity until hours later. Sang suddenly hears his daughter's voice through her bedroom door. He steps inside the room, and flings open a closet door, hoping that his daughter is back. But it turns out, they are actually the ones being baited into a trap. Then the door is closed by an unseen force, and the wavelength detectors start going haywire, sensing the dozen blinded children now inside the room. One of them, a gray-faced boy with monstrous eyes, shrieks at Sang. The exorcist quickly warns him through the earpiece. He reminds him that blinded children cannot sense humans if people keep their eyes closed, otherwise they will consume people's souls. So Sang hurriedly closes his eyes, and the exorcist guides him in crossing the room, without alerting the blinded to his presence. He is almost to the door when his smartwatch begins to beep. The blinded now know his location, and they all run toward him. He tosses his smartwatch across the room, to distract the blinded as he darts to the door, and steps out of the daughter's bedroom. Meanwhile, a blinded girl appears to the exorcist. He's not able to close his eyes, so the blinded senses him and throws him across the study. The exorcist pulls out a dagger and chants a prayer, but both are useless against the child. With extraordinary power, she chokes the exorcist and screams. The exorcist emerges from the study with a knife stuck in his gut, saying immediately takes him to the hospital to get treated. As he's being wheeled to the emergency room, he faintly whispers that the blinded girl who stabbed him is called Jin. 
Sang flips through the Exorcist's photo album and finds the details about Jin who has been missing for three decades already. He looks closely at her photo and sees that the dirty rag doll that his daughter found actually belongs to Jin. Sang pursues this lead and heads to Jin's father's house in the mountains. Ever since his daughter disappeared, the father has been a recluse, with weird stuff hanging on the trees around his house. Sang sees that talisman papers are also glued on his front door. Meanwhile, the exorcist's life is saved, but he still hasn't woken up. While in the hospital, he dreams of his dead mother, telling him to find her. Suddenly, he wakes up. Jin's father recounts that his daughter disappeared one day, while sleeping in the next room. His wife went out to look for her, but also disappeared shortly after. Ever since, the man lived in isolation in the mountains. Sang shows him the doll, but he panics, frantically grabbing it, then burning it. But it's too late. The doll summons the blinded girl again, and she attacks her father. Then she possesses her father, manipulating him to choke Sang. While this is happening, Sang sees the father's memories. It turns out, three decades ago, Jin's father was deep in debt and was financially ruined. He got the idea to kill his daughter by suffocating her with smoke inside the closet. He thought it would save her from a life of poverty and suffering. Right then, the door bursts open, and the exorcist storms inside. He restores the father to his self. However, the closet behind Jin's father screeches open and takes him whole. The truth is that Jin is none other than the demonic child. Her traumatic death and resentment for her father who killed her were strong enough to transform her into a vengeful demonic child who preys on emotionally vulnerable children due to similar childhood traumas. While on the drive home, the exorcist explains all this to Sang. He also adds that all the missing children have problems with their parents, including Sang's daughter. This makes Sang feel guilty for neglecting his daughter and blaming her for his wife's death. Because they're running out of time, Sang proposes that he go to the underworld and retrieve his daughter himself. He achieves this by simulating a panic attack, which brings him close to the frequency of the underworld. Sang sits inside the closet as the exorcist enacts a ritual and chants a prayer. When he opens the closet door, Sang is now in the desolate underworld version of his house. All around him are broken children's toys. Suddenly, knives come flying out of nowhere. He escapes to the hallway, where he fights with an apparition of his dead wife. Finally, Sang stumbles outside and sees the missing children happily playing while wearing school uniforms. But when he gets closer, the children all turn into their blinded selves and attack Sang. He hears his daughter playing the violin, and he tries to reach her. However, he comes face to face with the demonic child herself. He attempts to appeal to her emotionally, but this doesn't work, and the demonic child chokes Sang. Meanwhile, the blinded are trying to get out of the closet and into the real world. The only one standing in their way is the exorcist. While doing his best to block the closet door, he gets another vision of his mother telling him to find her. Meanwhile, the daughter starts turning into a blinded child, and the demonic child hands her a blade so she can kill her father. The exorcist summons the ghost of Jin's mother, and she appears in front of her child. She pleads for Jin to find peace, so they can be together finally. The demonic child slowly turns back into the innocent and scared Jin. However, the exorcist's powers get drained, and her mother's ghost disappears. Sang approaches Jin and comforts her. Because of that, Sang's daughter and the other kidnapped children's faces turn back to normal too. The exorcist beats his drums, and Sang wakes up his daughter. He carries her back to the real world just in time, before the realm closes. He and the exorcist rejoice at their victory. On the other side are Jin and her mother, finally settled at peace. Sang and his daughter's lives are going back to normal. They move to a new house, and the daughter loses her memories of the underworld. The father and daughter have a much better relationship now. However, the movie ends with another sad child in the city, finding a closet with a monster inside. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.